My name is Sarah Woodbury, and today we are talking about Celtic religion. Like the people living in Britain prior to 800 BC, the Celts had no written language. This obviously makes it difficult for us to develop a clear understanding of their religious beliefs. What we do have is the writings of the Romans who conquered them, which in itself is problematic because when victors write history, invariably they are writing from a position of their own magnificence and by definition are seeking to downplay and barbarize the achievements and culture of the people they conquered. Scholars do think there was a basic religious homogeneity among the Celts, with significant regional differences because they were spread out across Europe from Czechoslovakia to Ireland. Like the Romans who came to Britain after them, the Celts were polytheists, pagans if you will, believing in gods and goddesses, upwards of 200 of them. For example, the god Shu in Welsh mythology is a warrior god and ultimately the king of Gwynedd. He is associated with the Gaulish Lugus and the Irish Lu. For the Irish, the pantheon of gods is known as the Tuatha de Danann. Among the Welsh, they are the Mabinogi. So how did the coming of the Romans affect the Celts' ability to practice their religion? Right, the Roman conquest was a turning point in Britain because the Romans viewed the Celtic religion as subversive and encouraging rebellion and they directed significant resources to wiping out not only the Druids, who were the Celtic priests, but all sacred sites. These actions culminated in the year 60 with a Roman attack on Anglesey, as recorded by the writer Tacitus. He, the Roman general, prepared accordingly to attack the island of Mona. In order to cross the Menai Strait, he constructed a flotilla of boats with flat bottoms. By this method, the infantry crossed. On the beach stood the adverse array, a serried mass of arms and men, with women flitting between the ranks. In the style of the Furies, in robes of deathly black and with disheveled hair, they brandished their torches, while a circle of Druids, lifting their hands to heaven and showering imprecations, struck the Roman troops with such an awe at the extraordinary spectacle that, as though their limbs were paralyzed, they exposed their bodies to wounds without an attempt at movement. Then, reassured by their general and inciting each other never to flinch before a band of females and fanatics, the Roman forces charged behind the standards, cut down all who met them, and enveloped the enemy in his own flames. I think uh, my next band is going to be called Females and Fanatics. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> I think we could get quite a few band names out of that. Anyway, Tacitus goes on to say, The next step was to install a garrison among the conquered population, and to demolish the groves consecrated to what he calls their savage cults. He says that the Druids considered it a pious duty to slake the altars with captive blood and to consult their deities by means of human entrails. As I mentioned at the start, it is an open question as to how much we believe of what this one Roman wrote and how much we reject as writings of a victor denigrating the religion of the people they've just destroyed. Regardless, the Britons' religion syncretized with the Roman pantheon after the conquest, and then again with Christianity after 300 AD. Next week, we'll be talking about the Hill of Tara in Ireland. Thanks for watching my video. You can click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel to see more. There'll be a new video next week. If you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.